Are you feeling honoured in your relationships? Do you feel that the person you're in a romantic relationship with, that your colleagues, your workmates, your friendships, your family relationships, do you feel honoured in your everyday interactions with these people in your life? And I'll ask you to be sincere with yourself. We don't have to go out to the world and share our answers out there, but it's important that we are sincere with ourselves. And when we're honest with ourselves, it will pour out in honesty to others. If you don't feel honoured, if you don't feel loved and nurtured in your relationships, it's very easy for us to go outside to look at the person that we feel is not honouring us and to point the finger and say, you're not honouring me. My message today is the spiritual view of things and to ask you, instead of always looking outside into the outside conditional world, which we have no control over, I ask you to go inside and to completely go into your heart of hearts and to ask yourself, how have you not been honouring yourself? When we're really honest about this, and if we're feeling dishonoured, disrespected, betrayed, whatever comes up in our relationships, in the outside reflections of our lives, the first thing we do, the first thing we got to do is go inside and say, how am I disrespecting myself? Because when we show great self-love, and we truly nurture and adore our inner higher selves, our inner child, I mean, there's different names for it, the soul, our hidden intimate selves. When we truly honor that part of ourselves, we will naturally and organically attract honorable relationships. And we will also want to honor others because it's in our energy field. Now remember, this work is not intellectual. You can know all this intellectually, but it's about having it intrinsically in your energy field. And when it's solid inside you, in your consciousness, that's in your aura. And the people that you attract and the relationships that you have will reflect this. If you feel dishonoured and you've looked inside yourself and you can see how you dishonour yourself maybe in your thinking, perhaps you criticise yourself, perhaps you look in the mirror and you don't love or like what you see, perhaps you beat yourself up if you have anger or what other people tell you are inappropriate emotional responses. All of these things are ways of dishonouring ourselves. Maybe you don't look after yourself. Maybe you don't move your body. Maybe you don't let yourself dance. Maybe you don't eat the right foods. Maybe you stay up late working extra hours, pushing yourself to the limit all the time and always pushing, pushing, pushing and beating yourself up in those various ways. If this rings a bell, take it as a sign from your angels that you found this video today and take it as a pointer in the right direction to say, no more. I don't need to dishonor myself in these ways. I don't need to be unconsciously dishonoring myself because sometimes we think we're loving ourselves. Sometimes we feel, oh yeah, you know, I go to the gym three times a week. I eat my vegetables. I call my mother, I'm a good person. But actually, they're just, it's an intellectual loving the self, ticking the boxes. You know, I keep my hair nice. I buy nice, trendy clothes. 
that's not the kind of loving yourself I'm talking about. I'm talking about the loving yourself where when you get up first thing in the morning and your hair is all knotted and you're feeling that morning <laughs> you look in the mirror and like Louise L. Hay said, you look in that mirror and you see the raw truth and you say, I love you. And you mean it. Because it's not about this. It's not about your clothes. It's not about ticking the boxes and, you know, I pay my taxes. I recycle. I'm a good person. It's about the deep, deep treasures of self-love that are very deep. It's about the intimate relationship that you have with yourself. When we have a clear and sincere relationship with our soul self, that is reflected in our energy and it's reflected in the people that we attract. And I noticed in myself when I really got into, like I really devoted myself to self-love um, several years ago. And I really wanted to get into a passionate state of being in love with myself. And I, again, this is not about the ego. This is about the intimate, deep, deep, mysterious, higher self relationship that we're all engaged with here on planet Earth, with ourselves. And I really noticed a massive change in my life patterns and I noticed a change in the quality of friendships, relationships, uh, work connections, networking, um, my family, how I related to family members, how I interacted with them and how they interacted with me because I wasn't carrying this negative beating myself up stuff in my energy field so I wasn't attracting those kind of negative beat me up signs in my energy to have those negative interactions so it's very much about you have to go inward remember the outer is always a reflection of the inward and all relationships are just reminders for us of you know who do you want to be how do you want me to treat you because you will always determine how people treat you. If you treat yourself, if you're harsh on yourself, if, as I said, you push yourself too hard, um, you know, you never give yourself any time for rest or pleasure or sensuality or just to shoot the breeze in nature. If you're not allowing those things for yourself, that's not love. And you might disguise it and wrap it up in, well, I'm ambitious, I'm career minded, I'm going to you know, uh, pummel my way to the top, I'm going to work crazy hours and, um, you know, or I'm going to starve myself and punish myself with demanding regimens. There's no, there's no love in that. That's, that's society's inferior, superior ego version of loving yourself. And it has nothing to do with true unconditional love. In your relationships, if you're feeling dishonoured, check inside. If you can recognise where you're dishonouring yourself, that is beautiful because that was the goal, that was the whole point of attracting that experience with the dishonouring person. They were actually a master teacher for you to reconnect with the self and for you to recognise where you're dishonouring yourself. And when you're able to see where you're dishonouring, where the pattern is, where it's in your energy and your consciousness, you can then turn that around and you can see how, how can I now change this into a more honourable situation? How can I reconnect with the real me and create honourable energy in my consciousness, in how I think and talk to myself? You know, Matt Kahn says, if you wouldn't say it to a three or four year old child, if you wouldn't say something, you wouldn't say something mean or nasty, if they were upset or hurt or tired, don't say it to yourself. And I think that is the most wonderful um, advice. And I think it's life changing. So every time you're beating yourself up, every time you're being tough and dishonoring yourself, you say, hang on, 
Would I say that to a, a four-year-old? No way. That would be cruel. That would be disrespectful. It would be mean. So why, why would you say that to yourself? Because your soul is like this beautiful, innocent child that you need to nurture, that you need to embrace and look after. Another thing as well, I, I see this um, with my work. I see a lot of parents and I had a, um, a lady who she was saying she wouldn't let something happen for her daughter. Um, and yet she was letting it happen for her. And I always remember years ago when I was in Canada, um, this lady, this is the lady I'm talking about, she said, it's interesting, I, I, would, I would kill the person who, who dishonoured my daughter and yet I'm letting this man dishonour me. And I said to her, well, that, isn't that very interesting? Why is it okay for it to happen to you but not okay for your daughter? Because you love your daughter unconditionally. Because you honour your daughter, you respect her, but yet you're not giving those same beautiful qualities to yourself. And actually, as a mother, as a parent, as, some, as a teacher, it's important that we lead by example. If your children see you in disrespecting, um, abusive, toxic relationships, that's the example of love that you're giving them. So, and words don't teach. You know, experience teaches us. So your experiences are examples for the people who are observing you, who are watching you. So how can you honour yourself more? These are questions you need to ask yourself. And maybe you are honouring yourself. Maybe you're doing your very, very best. And that's all that all of us, any of us can do. We all do our best. And I think if you're doing your best, you honour yourself and you expand that even more by acknowledging, I'm doing my best. And this is, I am more than enough. That's very important. There's a big disease in society of not, I call it not enoughness, you know, and uh, advertising the media will play into this, you know, you're not enough, you need this cream, food, car, whatever, you know, they're always going to be pushing not enoughness and, and tapping into our insecurities. But it's important that we recognise that I am more than enough, I am more than I'll ever understand enough because I, I'm not even fully seeing myself through the eyes of God. But God knows your immense worthiness and it's important that we regularly remind ourselves of that so it's about checking in going inside feeling out our energy and if a relationship is not relaxing for you that's a big one if you don't feel relaxed and peaceful and whole when you're with another person that's a huge alarm bell that something's off the people that I've had the best relationships with, I always could be myself. I was relaxed. I, I actually felt more relaxed when I was with them because it was like, oh, I can get to spend lovely time with this lovely person and I could unfold my energy out and you know, let it all be free. And that's very important. If you're around somebody who's making you feel tense or making you feel like you, you have to filter yourself or water yourself down or shrink yourself in some way so that they don't feel insecure or they don't feel threatened by your, your shine, something's wrong. So if you're in that situation and you stumbled across this video today, this video was for you because it's pretty late here. I'm pretty tired, I've had a long day, but by God, I really felt my guide's um, source energy really encourage me and inspire me to do this video tonight so take this as a sign from your angels and remember you have choices and you can always choose again take back your power take back your freedom and don't be afraid to move on and know that when you make those positive choices the universe will absolutely support you and you will attract positive empowering relationships but it all begins with the self it all begins with honouring the self, being the best version, the best beautiful soul's person that you can be.